Another new year in Android land and nothing has been changed. So what do I mean with this? That is quite simple. The king is still the king and doesn't call himself the GT king. Hey hey, it's awesome that you're tuning in. Because in this video we are going to talk about the Shield or the Nvidia Shield Pro Edition. There's also a normal version, I don't own it, but I just want to focus this video on the Pro, the best one you can get when it comes to Android boxes. There is a Pro version and there is also an old Pro version. Yeah, it's all quite, quite confusing, but in this video I also will explain you what are the differences between two of them. <laughs> The Nvidia Shield Pro. So this is basically like the Deluxe First Edition. This was back in the day, they basically like also sold it with the Nvidia Shield controller. With the new version, they don't do that anymore. You can buy it separately and nowadays I like pretty damn rare to find what I understand of. It also comes with the old remote. The Nvidia Shield came with the 500GB hard disk built in. So this Pro version is kind of more of a novelty nowadays. Location wise, the Nvidia Shield is the Tegra H1 processor. It's a very interesting processor because it's still capable of running a lot of emulators and of course a lot of Android games. 256 core Nvidia graphics, 64 bit CPU, 3 GB of RAM and 5 GB of storage already mentioned before and we can even use an expansion through the USB port. Android TV with Google Cast. This thing has been capable of running 4K, 1080p and 720p. It has the HDMI 2.0b with the HDCP 2.2 plus HDR functionality. But this older Nvidia Shield Pro, is it worth picking up? Because it's quite expensive if you're going to look around. Maybe you can pick it up for cheap, maybe from a thrift shop. You will be lucky, because in general, this is like a collector edition nowadays. Yeah, and people pay a lot of money for it, including myself, because I just wanted to review it here on the channel. But let's take a close look at the Nvidia Shield itself. The first thing I'm noticing is like this thing is heavy and gigantic. Unfortunate, the scratches on here are inevitable, but they have like a lot of them and they are very, let's say, very thorough to the paint job itself. So I'm hoping I can polish it up and clean it in the future, but for now, this is what we're going to get. I'm also wondering what people do with these things. So at the back, we do have like the similar ports like the previous ones I've reviewed. Here we're going to get the power supply input, HDMI, we're going to get the Ethernet, two USB ports, micro USB, and of course the option to expand your internal memory with a micro SD card. But when you're looking at the Nvidia Shield, it's capable of running a lot of Android games on higher resolutions. I have seen myself a lot of, say, Chinese AliExpress boxes, but most of them will have some limitations, for example, with the Asphalt games. But with the Nvidia Shield, also the older models with the old school Tegra X1 chip, they are capable of running a lot of games on high resolution and also great FPSs to have a cool and good Android gaming experience. So let's start off with some Sega Dreamcast in combination with the Redeem emulator and we can run it on higher resolutions with the Nvidia Shield. Even the older models are having enough power to run these games perfectly. Let's give it a try with a three-dimensional game and also here we don't have any problems whatsoever. But for the people who want to play some GameCube, unfortunate, it is not running perfectly. Even with some Crash Bandicoot, you can see it's not even hitting the 30 FPS, getting into freaking title screen. Trying to get yourself the MMGR, the special modified GameCube version, tinker a lot with it, and there are a couple of games that will work eventually. But if you take into consideration that the latest, let's say, Nvidia Shield Pro with the Tegra X1 chip also had problems with GameCube, you can expect that the older version doesn't like run it at all, or at least having a less performance than the newer model. So let's move on to the PlayStation. We do have the option to upscale it to two times resolution with some emulators. I'm using here the EP6E emulator. Personally, I'm a big fan of it. Also, the dock station is a little bit better than this version when it comes to emulators. But an overall performance on the Nvidia Shield is absolutely amazing. So if you're a big fan of PlayStation, you really can enjoy some PlayStation you want on higher resolution than with your typical Android box from AliExpress. Fight. 
Another game that is more demanding is Air Type Delta, one of my favorite shmups to play and even love to play it on my regional system. But when you're looking into the Nvidia Shield and going to push it up to two times resolutions, it looks so much better. And I kind of really enjoy it playing this game on some emulation in combination with higher resolutions. I think that makes the Nvidia Shield and again like a little bit better than all your typical cheap China boxes they could pick up for maybe like a portion of the money. Question remains, do you think it's more than enough to run this on two times resolution and pay a shitload of money for an Nvidia Shield? Next up, let's try some PlayStation Portable with PP SSPP. And here you can see like you need to go into the setting and tinker a lot with it. To begin with, frame skipping one needs to be on with God of War. So let's load up the quick save I've made so we, oh, we can finally skip that bloody freaking intro. But with the Nvidia Shield, we do see some hiccups to the 25 FPS sometimes. But on overall, with frame skip, it's a really cool performance. And this is just a limitation of the Nvidia Shield, the old but also the new version. You're just going to get yourself an okay performance. But when you go to deep dive into the PlayStation Portable catalog of games, you will find games that will run on full FPS. And even sometimes you need to tinker a little bit with it, you're going to get an amazing performance on even, let's say, higher resolution. When you had like God of War playing on, let's say, frame skip, you can maybe do a little bit of tweaking here and there with certain games. Round two. Fight. <laughs> With Sega Saturn and the Yaba Shansiro emulator, you're going to get an overall okay performance. I did put it on original resolution and entered some frame skip here and there because some games do struggle, depending of course of the emulator updates. Maybe in the future we're going to get even more and better performance, but it's pretty damn cool to see a lot of games are running okay on this system. So basically they're calling this thing the Nvidia Shield Pro, but basically they should call it like the Nvidia Shield Pro Plus, because that's actually what it is. This was the Nvidia Shield Tigra chip, only a little bit more tweaked and we had more power. But how did it basically result in emulation? In this case, nothing much was changed. Or we did have some better performance, but not like something that was like a wow effect. Despite that, the Pro, but also the Pro Plus version, they were going to call it, is just absolutely like kind of funny because they are like both the most powerful Android boxes for everyday use. Not only for emulation, but also if you want to watch them 4K, this thing has provided some interesting features. The new version did came with some extra like software tweaks, so especially when it comes to 4K HDR Android TV, but I would not be surprised something like that would come to the older model of the Android box, or just having like the normal version. I bought this thing used because they are like quite difficult to find here in my country and also if you're going to buy, find them you're going to be needing to pay a lot of money for it. Was it really worth it? That we're going to talk about later on. But this thing was absolutely heavy and it's absolutely a beast. Especially when you're looking at the Pro number 2 and we're going to put them side by side. It's kind of ridiculous if you look them side by side how huge the older one is. But take consideration they added a 500 gigabyte disk in it. It's a 2.5 inch, let's say a laptop drive. And yeah, and not, so far I know it's a platter disk, not an SSD. And that makes like a big difference. So when you're having like the newer version, the newer version will come with a 60 gigabyte built in. Not a lot to be honest, like what the hell is Pro that about? I was thinking like at least put like 128 gigabyte or something in it, but nope, they didn't. When you're going to put them side by side, we do have like some minor differences. Not only that the one came with a controller, the other one doesn't. You need to buy it separately. Like, you know, I like the mumbo jumbo they implemented later on. But what I think when you're looking at the specs, especially when you're looking at benchmarks, game related stuff, you don't go to get a big difference over here. Yeah, they give it a little tweak, but the new Nvidia Tegra chip was yeah, more like a minor upgrade. And in my opinion, a little bit of a disappointment. But basically when you're going to put all the numbers ahead beside, this is what we're going to get. Let's do a briefly like a side by side comparison with the 500 gigabyte older pro version and the new one over here that only has 16 gigabyte built in if I'm saying it correctly. So then we have like when you're going to put them 
on top of each other you can see how huge the older version is kind of funny if you ask me the remotes i personally really love the new version it also comes with a lighter feature it does have like so many new things attached to it in combination with all of the buttons we still have like the selector over here and the touch is also improved and what i already mentioned like i don't like the flat model it does have like a very nice feeling because of the metal plate at the back and this thing is more plastic fantastic but besides that point i really love it how it looks just the options the way you can basically like navigate through quickly to netflix the things that they absolutely improved when you're looking at the remotes and video shit did an amazing job i hope you're hoping they will release a new one or better said what they're going to improve in the future what I found a little bit of disappointment is when you're looking at both models, you can see like there are not a lot of big differences. Do so I have like the input of the power supply here? They changed how basically like the HDMI and the RG45, but we're still going to get two USB ports. The only thing this thing has is the micro USB port. Then we have like the input for the micro SD card over here. It's so like a little bit of a bummer. I wish that like added like more USB port to this freaking thing. That I was a little bit disappointed buying the Pro. And the reason why is that they didn't come with a freaking controller. Because I really love the gaming feature of the Avenia Shield. So one of the things they implemented with this new version. Is that we do get a different remote. The remote itself does also have the Netflix button. And it feels very nice. It is a Bluetooth remote. And this thing is absolutely like very high quality. One of the best ones I have seen when it comes to Android boxes. Another thing I personally really like the Nvidia Shield when it comes to the design itself. It's absolutely amazing. Maybe in the future we'll take a close look at some other models, but when you're looking at a couple of say the last the revisions, they didn't improve a lot. Or you're going to take a close look at the old Pro, but that's something for a different video. The only downside is that we do get like two USB connections over here. I wish they implemented at least like a couple of them at the front because I really love it to use this thing and just plug in the controller at the front. But that is not the case. Then we do have like an HDMI at the back, an RG45 connection for the internet, and we're going to get ourselves the weird, non let's say, not really common plug. I think it's unique for NVIDIA for the power supply input. Okay, so when you're looking inside, we're going to get the self the power supply that is unique to the NVIDIA Shield. So where a lot of these Android books from China work on 5 volt and 12 volt, this one works on different voltage, 19 volts to be exactly. It's quite interesting if you ask me. Here we go to get the plugs that you basically like need to slide in and you can plug it in the swell socket. So do we get ourselves like some manuals or a quick starter guide that explains how everything works, especially when you need to connect the remote if it doesn't work. So this, so far, I know the only thing that we're going to get inside the box. But let's plug in this bad boy and just see what we can do when it comes to video playback. Is it even capable of running some emulation? Because that I also want to point out because that makes this thing very interesting to buy. Okay, so let's plug it in and let's go. Well, keep in mind that you're going to need a lot of upgrades and new updates. I had it with the old box, but also with the new version. So take some time to set it up. When you're comparing the GT King, Nvidia Shield and all the high-end Android boxes, what I did notice with this is that the Nvidia Shield has way more to offer. Not only the Nvidia games where you can stream from their services, and it's so far I know on paid service, you can do so much great things. Okay, so of course we're having the Google Play Store. And with the Google Play Store, there are so many great games you can play. But because this device itself is very powerful, it also has the option to play three-dimensional games very well. But when you take a close look at the games you can play with the Play Store, it's just one gaming machine. But also there are other features that I wanted to, to talk about with you. Some games are free to play, some games you need to buy for a couple of euros, so take that in consideration. So and overall, I think the Nvidia Shield is really appealing to the gamers who just want to have a plug and play box that can play a lot of games. So one of the new features that Pros has is EA Scaling. I have messed around with it and I must say, it's a great option and it's a cool addition to the Nvidia Shield Pro. So when you're looking at retro emulation, the support of the emulators is just massive compared with the Chinese. The Chinese had to be more like different Android versions that we still struggle with installing some of these emulators. But nevertheless, we're also going to do a separate review about it, but also we're going to test it out some retro games here in this video. But if you just want to use the device like a YouTube machine, want to watch 4K on your television, I think the Nvidia Shield is an amazing piece of hardware. Compared with the other Android boxes I've checked out, most of them are running it very well 4K native resolution, but some are struggling a little bit here and there. 
But an Nvidia Shield doesn't have any issue when it comes to 4K streaming from YouTube. When we're going to do a benchmark, if it is 3D mark, if it's going to be the Antutu benchmark or Geekbench multi-core testing. What I did notice when you're comparing the Nvidia Shield TV Pro against other boxes like the B-Link GT King Pro. You can see with the scores that with some things like the Antutu benchmark it's going to get a gigantic difference. But with the Geekbench multi-core you can see it's going to get a really close match. And that is the difference what we're going to get with Nvidia Shield. You pay maybe sometimes double the price comparable with, depends of course where you buy the B-Link. But you have so many new features when it comes to the Nvidia Shield TV Pro. And I think this thing is just worth it when you're comparing it to the Chinese boxes. Okay, so for this part of the video, we're going to play some games, test them out, but I'm also going to use it with an Xbox 360 controller. Yeah, it's really old school. But the reason why I really love this controller, not only for the form factor and how comfortable it is, when you combine this with the Nvidia Shield, it will recognize by emulators, games, you name it, it, it works like a charm. So I recommend if you're not interested in the Nvidia Shield controller, you can also pick up a Microsoft controller and these will work just fine. Plug and play without any hassle. Oh, don't you love when you're playing the games and you just need to download a lot of extra stuff. But nevertheless, we're going to try some real racing. Don't mind my racing because, oh man, racing with a controller on this is not very easy to do. But just want to give you a quick look how it looks and how it plays. Alright, so in the next part, let's try some emulating and let's see how our games are running. Keep in mind, I will do an extended testing on the Nvidia Shield Pro, but for now, let's play some Red Dream. Okay, so we're going to shut down the frame skipping, game expert ratio 4x3, and we're also going to run it on 4K. Take in consideration that you need to buy the program if you want to do this. Strengthen the soul of You win! But you can see that the games run perfectly on 60 FPS locked without frame skipping on the Nvidia Shield Pro. And I can tell you, the GT King does struggle a little bit. Okay, so with the PPSSPP emulator, it runs very nice with Tekken 6 and God of War will struggle. But in the end, when you're doing a little bit of modification with God of War, it will run fine on the system itself. Because God of War will still be a more like the game that's very hard to emulate. And in combination with Nvidia Shield Pro, you can play a lot of great games on 60fps in combination with 2x resolution. So I think the Nvidia Shield Pro is a very cool device. And you can see with a lot of these Chinese boxes are struggling. PSP is running very well on the Nvidia Shield Pro. You win. Round two. Fight. Yeah. 
Okay, so when you're looking at God of War, Chain of Kinkiness, uh, I mean, uh, Chain of Olympus. So what you're going to get with this game, it's going to be in like an okay performance. Yeah, nowadays we do have devices like handheld that run on 60 FPS. But for Android boxes, this is basically the best we can get. You can see like it dips all from 50 up to 60, kind of weird. So it's not a stable frame rate, a little bit of a bummer in my opinion. But when you're looking at the GT King, for example, that still is not powerful enough to run this game actually. Or you need to have some adding some frame skipping. So let's talk about the remotes, because there we're also we're going to get a small difference. So here we have the old remote, and the old remote is made like out of plastic and metal materials. At the back we're going to get us like a very nice metal, and gives like a very, let's say, very nice look to it, but also it's kind of cold. But the new version has so much more features. It also came with the Netflix button and other features, which you can see over here. Navigating both of them, like I think the new one is absolutely more comfortable due of the shape. Because of the square shape, or yeah, it's absolutely great. Like, you know, like it feels so much more comfortable. The button itself is more comfortable. I think it's even like a little bit smaller now. So they did some changes over there. This thing is just functional as is. You can go back, voice control, stuff like that. But personal, the new one is absolutely so much better. It's fully made out of plastic, fantastic. But again, the way how it feels, the way of the options. Oh yeah, that is absolutely a big improvement. But performance wise, when you're looking at them, it's absolutely like not a big of a deal. And overall, like of course we're having a little bit more power, so we do have like a little bit better performance when it comes to emulation, and the new version has some new features. So for me, it was a little bit of a bummer back in the day, but it's still the king. So which one should you pick up? Both will have like the pros and the cons. And that's just a little bit of a bummer in my opinion. But beside that, yeah, it is also like where you can buy it. If you need to buy them both, brand new or better said, like complete in box. Like I think this thing is almost the same price like new ones. So sometimes it doesn't make even like no sense at all to buy an old one. And the old one does have like a platter disc in the inside. But well, thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit the little bell, become a wicked family, and it will be great to see you in the next video.